And then letting that go and ask yourself if you really have arrived here in the present moment. Are you, are you here? Are you present? Are you truly willing to be here and receive what this meditation, this coming together wants to give, gift you with? Take a moment to thank your body for exactly how it is. Good morning or afternoon or evening body. Good morning. Hello. might even want to touch it here and there so you're sure the flesh is here Mm -hmm. because this vehicle this flesh that's given to us through that we can wake up out of this beautiful body and then incend as i call it incend back into our bodies as this wake awake being living in this world. Thank you, body, for being here. And then letting that go and ask yourself if you really have arrived here in the present moment. Are are you here? Are you present? Are you truly willing to be here and receive what this meditation, this coming together wants to give, gift you with? And bring your attention to the breath and feel the kindness and gentleness of the breath. Just notice how the breath naturally flows into your body shallow or deep and naturally flows out. Keep on feeling this gentle caress of the breath. That it's not so much that we do the breathing, but the breath is so generous and breathing us, breath breathing us. Keep on staying. With the natural, gentle caress of the breath.
Keep staying with the effortlessness of the breath breathing you. Bringing life in your body. And bringing forth this exquisite beauty and aliveness in our bodies. Feel how naturally the breath is breathing us and moving with that, our bodies. We don't have to do anything, just sitting here and receiving, being caressed by our nature, the breath breathing us and bringing life and movement in our bodies. Notice how the more we connect with the breath and feel the breath and feel the movement in our bodies, the more we are connected with our bodies. And funny enough, the breath and our bodies are often so easily overlooked. And they are both freely given to us out of love. And also we never have to think about, do I still need to breathe? It just happens. And perhaps you also notice Right now, together, we're creating this field of sharing the breath. And through that, we share actually something much deeper. There's truly one thing we share. That's our true nature, our beloved. So together, we're creating this field one breath, one nature, this field of the silence of our one being.
And please know that you actually know this already. It's all free. We're freely given the one breath. We're freely given this one body. This one body of being. Many bodies of flesh, so to speak. One body, one field of being. One silent being. So here we are. And uh, today I will start uh, first with uh, guiding a meditation, short meditation. And uh, then speak a little bit. And then it's open uh, for question and answer. So make yourself comfortable. And if it's safe to close your eyes, I invite you to close your eyes. Just see what it's like to just close your eyes. What happens in your experience? Perhaps you notice immediately a deep silence or some thoughts or some sensations in your body. So see what it's like to allow whatever is here to be here. So there's absolutely nothing you need to change. And then bringing your attention to the breath, the breath breathing you. Keep staying with the air traveling in on the in-breath and out on the out-breath. So it's not like with effort following the breath, but it's more this sense of your body, your being is open, to receiving the breath. To see what it's like to receive the breath traveling in and traveling out. So it's kind of like a non-doing. We are the space in which the breath travels in and out. And stay with that simple instruction of receiving breathing, letting go of breathing. Receiving the air traveling in. If 
filling up your belly and chest. And letting go of breathing. It's all happening naturally on its own. The body moves or is moved by the breath traveling in and letting go. And notice by receiving the breath, traveling in and out. And actually the whole body is being moved. Tends to be obvious how torso is being moved by the breath breathing you. But also notice how the arms and hands are being moved. The pelvis and the legs are being moved. the neck and the head too. Very simple. Breath, breathing you, your body. Sweet body is moved. Perhaps some thoughts move, feelings, sensations. And notice how simultaneously there's also something very, very still without you doing anything. Something is resting. It's all natural. Naturally, the breath is breathing you. Naturally, the silence of your being is here. And perhaps some thoughts, emotions, feelings are floating in and out. And see what it's like to be touched by all, welcome in all. Not like, oh, I really want to be silent, or oh, I really want to be relaxing into breathing, or I really want to go into thoughts. 
Now just receiving all that comes and goes and all that is. Notice how naturally you start sinking in more deeply into the silence of your being, into the deeper I, the I am. You might even quietly, silently say to yourself, I, I am I. I, I am, I. Relaxing, receiving, I, I am. And if you notice, you get distracted by thoughts or start believing thoughts, no big deal. Just come back to the I, I am. That what you are.
There's nothing you need to do to be yourself. Body breathing. I am. I. The silence of your being. It's all here. While you're still resting within, even though there can be thoughts or anything happening also, slowly open your eyes. Just notice what it's like to have the breath still breathing you. The silence of being is here, as always, eyes open. No difference, eyes open or eyes closed. You might even want to look around the room where you are, just noticing breath is still breathing. I am is still I aming. And then wiggle your toes and Move your body, wiggle your hands, and if you need to stretch, allow yourself to stretch a little bit. And So here we are. Um, today, let me just look up the title of today. It's um, an exploration of total inclusion. How available are you to stay awake as a human divine in today's world. It's up to us to live the awakened life in every moment, in every situation. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I just wanted to read the beginning. And I had a big surgery a little bit over a year ago, last year, November, where my uh, 
two kidneys were taken out. They were really big. They were both like for Europeans and they were two so big for Americans. They were five pounds each, so they were really big and I looked already pregnant. So basically I feel I gave birth to twins and um, I had the luck of a new live kidney to be put in that's very tiny. Kidney is as big as our as a, a fist of our own hand and uh, latched on immediately and um, yeah so that whole process before, during and after uh, brought an incredible opportunity for me to um, take this challenge as a huge invitation and a huge invitation to really deepen more into being. And no matter how awake or not we are, any, any challenge is an invitation to deepen into being. It helps to dissolve a certain quality of belief we have in thoughts that are just thoughts. And uh, just helps to dissolve. It's more the situation helps us to come deeper, at least in my situation, in my experience. It helps me, help me to deeper and deeper relax into being. Because there was absolutely not much I could do besides relaxing into being. And uh, it's an incredible surrender to uh, be wheeled into an uh, operation room. And uh, I still remember uh, two of my very close friends were with me when they prepared me. The anesthesia lady uh, went over the whole procedure. And I just was so grateful for all the practice in my life to know that all there is is presence or the I am and simultaneously the love that was in the room, which is, is really a side effect of the I am. And to know that all to do here is to rest as the I am. And that's, so to come in a situation like that and then being wheeled into the operation room and on the way to the operation room, you come, you go through doors, a door goes open, and then you come in a, in a space that's cooler, colder. And then the next door goes open, and then you come in another space that's even colder. It's kind of like a movie. Till in the operation room itself, it's just basically cold. And uh, the thought comes like, oh, wow, how's my body going to do, you know, in this ice-cold place? But... You know, just letting go of that thought. And um, just so grateful for the practice of resting as the I am. And doesn't mean there was no discomfort. Doesn't mean there, you know, there was coolness. And when they, uh, they put an epidural in my uh, spine, and uh, didn't quite work. And so I said to the anesthesia lady, I forgot her name, uh, you know, I think I need to lay down and then uh, put the thing in and then my body will be able to receive it. So we did that. And just uh, I just felt so magical, just this whole preparation and then how they laid me on the table. And I had mentioned to her, you know, Please tell me exactly when you're going to put the fluid in to uh, bring me under because I just want to experience every second of it whenever I can. And I also had explained that I have a very sensitive body and so I know it will shake and will do all kinds of stuff. You know, don't sedate it. Just let my body do what it does. And that's what happened. And she said, this is what you mean? I said, yes, just let it happen. It will change. And, and then she told me to, uh, she, she's going to put the fluid in right now. And so and then off, off I went. And I could feel, you know, just going into this, 
you know, timelessness, really, even though we are already in timelessness anyways, but it was just so beautiful. Yeah, just because when we really relax into timelessness, we're not there anymore. You know, truly nothing is there. No thing is there. And then um, waking up. So in a funny way, I, I was not there during the surgery and simultaneously I was there. Presence was there. I was just presencing or I don't even know how to put it in words. So then I awoke and I remember the first thing while I was still laying with my eyes closed, the first thing I felt was this, wow, my belly is really light. You know, I hadn't really had any thoughts about how it would be after the surgery. You know, every step along the way takes all of the uh, attention. And just to feel that, that was just so delicious to lay there in this kind of, you know, timeless, groggy, spacious space and feeling how my belly was completely empty. At least that's how it felt and light. And then uh, all my friends came in and hang around me and yeah, it was beautiful. And then I feel after that, the challenge really started that was, that I was gifted with, even though, you know, I was born with the illness of the kidney so I had my own challenges already over time but I felt uh, life um, I don't know how you say it in English but up the granny a little bit so I was wheeled into the my hospital room and I thought oh, okay we're entering here another world <laughs> it's the world of the hospital and I felt I was kind of entering into a hell realm uh, hell realm which is a word that I actually never used before in my, as far as I remember. It was just so interesting to come in a space that was, I felt I was in, a, in the machine room of a factory. In the midst of all of that, the I am was and is here. So my friends made an altar and we covered the television and we covered the clock because there's like a clock this big right <laughs> in front of you and um, and it was just such an incredible gift to lay there not being able to move basically then laying on my back and being overly medicated of course and still the ocean of being is here and then one of the things, you know, doctors coming in and out and really not how to connect with a human being and nurses coming in and out, not really know how to connect with a human being, with here and there an exception. They're all in their protocols, their pills, their computers. And um, I, was, I was actually really sad for them, uh, how they are all in the straitjacket for me was an invitation of utmost inclusion. It's like all there is is the I am. All there is is the presence of being. And yes, my body was uncomfortable. Yes, there was shock in how I was treated. Yes, all those things. And yes, the amount of pills I was taking was uh, three meals, no, two meals a day of pills as but something was untouched. Something was completely, totally here, bright, clear, even though I was, you know, sleepy. There was excruciating pain at some point because a, a mistake was made with the pain medication, which they didn't really acknowledge, even though. I and my advocate, they we would tell them, but they said, "No, you have already enough." And but the, the epidural was leaking through which they gave the pain medication. And they, anyways, it doesn't really matter the whole story. But basically, I was in excruciating pain. And there's a place where we can really 
be with pain. It's kind of first kind of being with pain. And then all there is, is pain. And um, in my case, it was deeply sharp. And I was completely, you know, surrendered to the pain. What was a really beautiful experience, which I don't want to repeat, one time is enough. But what was beautiful, there was, you know, when I spoke first, the being with pain, then the relaxing into pain, and then being pain. Pain is all there is. There's not even that separation of being with. And then all there is is pain and surrender to that. And then just an absolute giving up because I felt like just put me in a bag, a plastic bag on the side of the road. I, I'm done. The amount of pain is like so excruciating. I, I can't even find words for it. I felt I went through the roof. And this by just letting tired being tired so the I am could take care of it all. And that's the same with, so it's, it's kind of like it's included. It's not like I don't want to be tired. Oh, why is this here? Why can't I go? It's just not even interesting to go there. It's not. This is what naturally wants to happen. The body wants to rest. And so it's a total inclusion. And in that inclusion, it's like just the intimacy with what is, the intimacy with the tiredness by letting it be what it is so I can taste it. And then naturally falling into the intimacy of, of the I am. I hope you get the sense when I share this because it's something we can all practice. Instead of going into the thinking mind, relaxing into the I am. It's kind of what Nisargadatta spoke about. You know, his teacher said, that's what you are, and that's what you need to practice, and that's what he did, and then he came home, by just constantly relaxing as the I am, staying there till he, he or it or that or whatever, everything dissolved into that and falling into the deepest silence of being, which, which is the I am in my experience. So everything in our lives is an opportunity to relax. Trust, relax, be the I am realized. Can be in the midst of pleasure too. You know, I live somewhere with a deck and I can oversee the whole forest all the way to the ocean. When I sit outside or even right now and I look outside, it's just pure pleasure. It's just pleasure and awe to receive that. Now I can hold on to the pleasure, that's not so much what it is, it's just the more I take in this beauty, which is part of the I am, you could say, is, a, is an expression of the I am, the more I deepen into the I am. So everything in our life that happens is an opportunity to stay awake and rest as the I am, just to rest home, till you just rest home and everything comes into that. So even while you're listening right now, just relax, keep on relaxing back into the I am. And it's not so much like getting the words by really uh, tensing up, it's more like the more you relax into yourself, the words, will come in, or it's not even the words that come in, it's just the energy behind the words. So the I am here is touching the I am there. The presence of being here is touching the presence of being in, in you. And the more we relax into the presence of being, 
the more we can be truly in relationship with ourselves, with all that is. And then what's revealed is a deeper sense of I am. So the beauty is the more and more relax, relaxing into being. Here, the more I, when I meet someone, a person, another, a tree, or really a piece of paper, the more I relax here as the I am, the more naturally I will meet the I am in the other, in the other form. And what will happen is kind of like a, what we call in Tantra, like a third energy. That's the energy of the relationship, which is the I am also. And kind of like a whole other ocean of being opens up, which is deeply unknown. And fueled by love and the I am. So during this year of healing, because it was kind of interesting in the hospital, you know, when I came home, then immediately in a few days I had to go for checkup. In the beginning, I had to go every week for a checkup, blood test, and they check the body and uh, everything. Um, I don't remember what I want to say. Oh, yeah. So, Every time I went for a checkup, and I could see on a weekly basis, it's nice to go to the same place, even though I, I don't particularly like the hospital as the same place to go to. Over. Um, the beauty of it is to go to the same place, it's kind of easy to recognize what, what has changed. And I noticed every next time I went, how naturally my body was a little bit stronger. And just could do a little bit more because the first time I went, I, I barely could walk and I just laid down in the waiting room till it was my turn to meet with the doctor. And um, And also in that, seeing that the body is so empowered by presence to come to healing. Body is always wanting to come to, to wholeness. And I can see step by step over this year, the body, every moment, it wants to come to wholeness. It wants to come to more strength. It wants to really drink in the goodness of food, the nourishment, also the nourishment, the deepest nourishment is of the I am, of the presence of our being. It just drinks it and drinks it and drinks it and uses it as much as it can. It's able to, to bring wholeness. And what I find, I must say, very quite remarkable is that, well, first of all, having a, a kidney, well, having two kidneys taken out. And then on top of that, having a kidney of somebody else put in me. But then also, in a funny way, that feels kind of natural, even though that's officially not natural, but in a funny way, it feels very natural to have this other kidney in me. Uh, I call it a she. It's kind of like a little angel in my body. They put it right by the right hip. And... Uh, I feel she is like part part of me instantaneously. Even during the surgery, I could feel already that this is this is a done deal. We're we're all one here. And uh, but what I found even more remarkable, because I'm a person that, in rare occasion, takes Western medication. The last you know since I left my parents' home in my teens, 
I, I just didn't take any medication, Western medication, only if I would take anything was alternative, uh, herbs and things like that. Or the medication of meditation. And um, to really allow the presence of being take care of the body. But then, uh, and of course, when I was on dialysis, I took some medication, but that's, you know, a, a fifth, no, I would say a, a tenth of what they wanted me to take. Most of it I refused. And with the immune suppressant pills, I I just, I take that, of course. And, um, but it was fascinating, the f- first three days that I was in the hospital, I lived on water and pills, literally, water and pills. I was not allowed to have solid food, just water and pills. And that, for me, was the most remarkable experience, to have twice a day, I would say a dose of about 17 pills. I I was just almost funny. I had like, well, if this body, my body can handle these amount of pills, you know, I'm fine. And I could also see that the more I believe, you know, in a pill's good or this is bad, whatever we believe, that's what we get. You know, that's what we experience. And I could see also, you know, as soon as possible, I quit most of the pills that I thought were not important. And I told them and they were a little surprised, but that's what I did, except with the immune suppressant pills. I still tell them what I want and need and how how I would like to do it. And then we go in conversation about it or not. But um, I could feel how like a dose of that or still now when I take them and it's way less, every time I can feel the way I take them affects the body. So if I take them like, oh, here are these shit pills, and then my body receives them as shit. When I take them as wholeness, my body takes them as wholeness. But no matter what way I take them, the body, I can just feel it in my body. The body just does everything to bring it to wholeness, to bring wholeness. And I find that so magical, but truly, it's natural. So, it's even the total inclusiveness with the pills. So, nothing is left out for me in my experience. Even if I would want to exclude something it's pointless it kind of hurts it's like everything is here so it's included it's part of the journey and the more i include there's no struggle with struggle there's just the relaxing deeper into the i am and the more i relax deeper in the easier it is to attend to whatever is needed because there's an openness to receive, you know. Same as when I guided you into meditation, the more we open to receive, the more, you know, it's kind of, the more we can be touched, pierced by life. And then life can do its thing because life brings everything naturally to wholeness. Look at nature. Everything, you know, we have the cycles of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And then again, spring. It just is always, it's bringing to life and really living it, dying, and then coming, going into the underworld and coming out into a new cycle of life. And that's what I feel challenges are. They give us an opportunity to come into new cycles of life, new, deeper cycles of life, new, more alive and more awake cycles of life. So that more and more we can see we're not our thoughts, we're not our feelings, we're not our emotions. They come and they happen. You know, we don't have to shove them out. They're part of life. But even in the midst of emotions, the more they are received, the more 
there is a joy in the midst of it, of what we truly are. So in a way you can say all the phenomena are still being experienced, but the underlying I am is here, and that's where we truly are. Yeah. So that in my experience is what this experience of going through surgery and the whole aftermath has given me and still gives me is this deep knowing of the I am what I am in, in a way not seeing the challenge as a challenge but even deeper to see it as an opportunity yeah to have have it as an opportunity of like, this is what is right now. And it can be with simple things, like for instance, the last few weeks I had a lot of things going on with taxes and with PayPal and uh, with my, um, what do you call that, uh, accountant person that was helping me and do all of that, it's such a hassle. But I can also take it as an opportunity. Okay, well, this needs to happen in this world. That's how it goes. I just take one step at a time. And then when I take one step at a time, every everything works out. Everything starts flowing. Because there's no fight anymore with, with what is. It's not supposed to be any way different. So then all the movement comes from relaxation. And... It's kind of helping you to slow down. And probably some of you have heard of Mercury going retrograde and perhaps we're still in it or not. But Mercury retrograde is also a really, really beautiful opportunity because it slows everything down. During that time, there tends to be the most challenges with computers, with technical devices, uh, people misunderstanding each other. But we can also take that time as an opportunity like, oh, wow, let's take my hands off. Let's slow down here for a moment. Let's relax inside here instead of getting more upset like, oh, I I need to do some, oh, gee. It's just, no, can this be here too? Can this be here too? Can I just slow down a little bit and relax, you know? I don't need to send this email today. It can happen tomorrow or the day after. The more we send an email back from this place of presence, from what we truly are, instead of reaction, the more we send it as the I am, the more we will get a response instead of a reaction. So again, it's including the experience. And really taking it on, being touched by it. And I'm moving from this movement as I am, as presence, as her, capital H, in my experience. So no matter how challenging life is, it always wants us to bring home. And perhaps... In some cases, uh, it's easier for me to speak about it in this way because, you know, where I live and I happen to be uh, having a white skin and I happen to live in a place where I have a home and I have food and I have clothes and I happen to have a car and bicycle. So I happen to be awake. You know, I. I have a quite privileged life, you know, quite, actually, we all here, we're all here together. We have a very privileged life. Otherwise, we couldn't even come together here and take time to sit in our, in and as our true nature. So we have quite fortunate lives that we can live, you know, even if we're disabled. Yes, 
being disabled is, is very challenging. And when we have the space to really relax into ourselves, um, it's very different when, than when we are really, really tortured or in, in war zones or some people that live in circumstances. Um, I don't even know how they do it. You know, I, I don't know what that's like because I don't have that experience. I have no clue. I can give my ideas, relax in the I am. Well, that's easier said than done. Or really attend to what needs to be attended to. And I do know people that lived in those zones. And also, it brought them in a, in a, you could say, by grace to their knees in a way that they were so humbled, so deeply humbled and came in touch with who they are. But it doesn't mean that happens for everyone. There's still a lot of suffering out there, a lot of suffering. So in a way, the more deeply we rest as the I am, we, we have the time that we can take to practice. The more we deepen in that, the more we help all beings everywhere, all the beings that are suffering with our wakefulness. So it's not all for ourselves, even though in the beginning it feels all for ourselves. It's wonderful to be awake for me, and it's wonderful to live for me awake. Yeah, it's super. We all do that. Till it just starts overflowing. We cannot but give to all around us, but also naturally sitting in an S meditation. We touch all beings everywhere. It does serve the whole. Yeah. Even if it's a little, um, how do you say that, um, break of a pin. It's just a dust touch. Please don't forget that. It's not for us only. It's for the whole. It's for all what we're doing. Even though waking up or the longing for freedom or the longing for enlightenment or whatever your experience is, Just know that along the way you touch all beings. All beings. Mm. So in that way, there's also total inclusiveness. My friend is just coming home. So all beings coming here and all beings being touched. 